Good morning, everybody. It's Christopher from Channel Education with the four majors in this update for the 19th of March 2013. Morning, folks. Let's have a look and see what the euro did yesterday, particularly the euro, because of what's been happening with Cyprus. And let's see how it's been factoring in the market. So let's have a look at that daily. Uh, very indecisive. You can see yesterday's candle, a spinning, to oh, sorry, a doji. Um, no trading range whatsoever. Um, quite a deep one, apologies, but no clear movement. And all of this taking place below that all important 1300. I did mention that we saw price actually finding more support above the 1300 near term. However, you can quite clearly see we've had one or two breaks, but you can see uh, the start of this week very, very um, negative and also very indecisive because of the news that came out this weekend about the issues that Cyprus is having at the moment. Uh, ongoing talks. There were meant to be uh, some sort of talks yesterday. However, they have actually they were actually cancelled, and I think they're going to be having them sometime either uh, during the course of this week. If not, we might hear Thursday uh, what the likely outcome is. But at the moment, I think they're dragging their feet at the moment. So things aren't looking all that rosy in Cyprus, and there are a lot of uh, reciprocates out there that are that aren't happy with what what the um, the government's planning to do. So very very important. As long as that ma is the talking factor the more likely that's going to weigh on Europe in a whole and it's going to play against the euro count uh, crosses so as it stands here for for Europe you can see quite euro uh, you can see quite clearly we are trading below the 1300 and as long as it maintains below 1300 then everything's looking very positive for further downside as we are very much in an extended downtrend uh, we have if I just zoom out of my daily have broken the major uptrend for this time frame August of last year right through to the February sorry the January half and since then we've actually been seeing price fall into the downside we are testing the institution moving average here at 1290 and the last time we actually did test that was in november of last year um, you'll notice that before august of uh, sorry september of uh, 2012 we we're actually trading below the institution and um, we spent more time since september above the institution so th the fact that price is back here again uh, quite shortly is not a really good sign and if we get below the institution then I feel that we're going to see price really rallying further with a lot more momentum to the downside and in particular heading towards this price support and resistance level here roughly around the 12700 mark first before we get a break of that and then we could be looking at price moving towards certain points of the downside uh, we've got a clear one over here roughly around the 12400 mark but the all important 1200 would be our long-term goal for any of you long-term traders out there 1200 if we get a break below the institution would ideally be our long-term goal for the foreseeable future the negativity near term is really playing um, or really affecting price action and if you look at the weekly chart I did mention it yesterday I was a bit um, I was just putting it out to my to the students um, we could see that 2008 highs here on my weekly uh, weekly chart quite clearly and then we've had a, a another pronounced high back here in the latter part of 2009 and that failed and we saw a major fall to the downside through 2010 uh, a slight correction through the end the latter part of 2010 going into 2011 but we saw price coming unstuck through a large part of the early part of 2011 and that also led to price falling quite drastically th over that period into the mid 2012 and then we've seen this correction from mid 2012 up till now but you can see quite clearly we've had a a tweezer top at a major support and resistance level in the shape of the institution price was unable to actually uh, keep on to or maintain those highs above the institution to kick on to the upside and in doing so it's now started this negative fall from grace and am i wondering is this the new high now as and you can see where the major trend is on my weekly we got a all-time high in 2008 before the market really fell off but then we got the swing low swing low are we seeing now near term the start of this year being the new swing low and if that's the case the more likely price is to spend below 1300 the more likely we're going to see price heading towards that 12700 and ultimately re-attempting that 1200 near term the fact that cyprus is part of the the problem now is not going to go away they're going to have to come up with a problem and the longer they take to come up with a solution and it, it's just going to it's going to remain very very negative near term uh, for anybody or any investors out there who look who are looking at euro as a whole uh, not really good so as long as we maintain below 1300 we should be looking for that ultimate bearish engulfing candle uh, we're going in today you can see the asian session last night very very indecisive on the daily and well, what we want to see now is a clear move away from the 1300 on the downside and preferably getting away 
and, and below that 12,900 as soon as possible. So we want to see a bearish engulfing candle today. Uh, the four hour chart, you can see a lot of indecision. You can see we've, we've spent a lot of time just going sideways, not real clear movement. We had a, lot, uh, a massive candle yesterday afternoon at six o'clock GMT, moving to the upside, however, just being capped again. And uh, price since then hasn't really made any higher highs. Through the Asian session, you can quite clearly see here, roughly around the uh, taking away, not the wicks, but the actual body candles themselves, you can quite clearly see roughly around 1296 has been the actual um, the level, the resistance level for that time frame. And as long as that maintains in play, then there's more likelihood for price to be f um, being pulled to the downside. And if that's the case, we should be looking at roughly back down towards that 12900 near term as our first target intraday. So hourly chart, you can see all that hesitation going sideways. Just remember these highs now getting lower near term as well through the Tokyo Asian session, boiling off uh, an exhaustion candle here, just going into the, the uh, 6 a.m. GMT fall off, but not really, really good. However, my CTC on the other side on my hourly chart frame is telling me I should be looking for buying sentiment. It's going sideways. We're below a major uh, support and resistance level in the shape of the, of the 1300. The institutions above me, all the moving averages above me so there's a lot more resistance in favor so this is i'm not going to take um, any um, part of this buying sentiment until we actually get above the institution above 1300 then my 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 my, uh, my ethic will change to one of bullishness but until it remain uh, uh, until it stays or remains below 1300 the outlook for, for the time being i'm looking for those shorts to the downside on to the us dollar uh, sorry on sterling against US dollar. Let's have a look at the, week, uh, the daily here for this particular pair. You can quite clearly see we had Monday, also very, very indecisive. I think uh, Sterling will be well aware of what's been happening in Cyprus, and therefore price action will probably mirror that sentiment. Uh, Sterling is very, very... Um, they require Euro. They, 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 they tend to work together quite closely. Um, Sterling is a bit more skittish these days, primarily because of all the issues it's having uh, within its own economy. But... They rely very heavily on the euro and if europe is going to be going through or is going to go through terminal it tends to put the brakes on on this particular pair so um it's you can see that sentiment generally playing out yesterday however we can see quite clearly near term we've had a bounce now psychological bounce at 148500 and that was our weekly uh, fib retracement area and since then it's actually bounced to the upside perfectly through uh, Thursday in particular, above this area of 15.05, which happened to be our 100% FIB projection level of the high here that we saw in January. As long as it stays above there, there's more likely for price to uh, build on that and then head up towards that magical, all-important 15.200 or 13, uh, sorry, the 15.300, which is a major support and resistance level in the past. 15.300, uh, very strong psychological support and resistance level. That was broken quite aggressively. Uh, just recently through February and price has fallen off to that 14.85 but we've had a correction and now if we want to see further corrections to the upside we do need to see a bush engulfing candle and that would indicate we should be heading towards that prior resistance level near term here at 15.200 and ultimately back up to 15.300 but there's a lot of resistance in this area guys and that's the reason why I'm, I'm still looking short on this negative we have had some positiveness near term however we're still capped by this undecided or price trading below that major support and resistance level in the shape of 15300 so if you are going to be looking for any buying sentiments here you're going to have to be very aggressive with the entries and your stops and take those profits when they present themselves because as long as price remains below 15300 there's more likely for price to just roll over and you can see the ctc on, on either end on my weekly and daily which i'm looking at right now are very very negative in that sense so for our candle or for our charts you can see the 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 intermediate trend on my four hour has been breached you can see that the institution moving average has been above price for a long period of time. However, that is now changed because of the fact that we had this bullish engulf and candle has taken us above this 15, uh, 1505, which is that 100% FIB projection of our, hun of our weekly. However, you can see quite clearly price has re-attempted 1500 uh, recently and failed to actually hang on to that. And if I just zoom out, you can see how many times price has actually been resisted by this 15200 mark. So clearly there's a lot of resistance above price at the moment. And if we're asking a break here, you can see the 200 pair of moving averages starting to, um, the slope has started to get less and less. It's, it's starting to flatten out now. But price needs to maintain by 1505 and a bullish engulfing candle needs to present itself. And then we can actually trade aggressively into this consolidative support here. Uh, sorry, resistance. 
and then once we uh, take our profits when they present themselves and if we get a genuine break above 15300 near term then our change in psychology uh, will be uh, something to look at because of the fact that prices now uh, come up with the sentiment to actually drive it above 15300 that major support and resistance level so it's important that we see price actually consolidating by 1505 near term and and moving higher in order to actually um, take profits or to make profits on the bounce be aggressive though very very important you've got to be aggressive when you're trading into or trading against major sentiment and we know that the major sentiment on our sterling is very negative at the moment so take those profits when they present themselves US dollar Swiss franc let's have a look and see what's been happening on this particular pair very interesting yesterday we had a bearish engulfing candle however yesterday's range really taking all that back a lot of buying sentiment for the US dollar against the Swiss franc and in doing so we've now seen price actually finding a lot more support above that 940 you can see the near term trend for this particular pair is very much to the upside swing highs dictating that price is uh, moving to the upside quite aggressively we're spending more time above the institution and if I just pan out on this particular further daily, you can quite clearly see that we haven't been above the, inst the, the institution since November and before then through September. We spent a lot of time below the institution and hence the reason why we saw a lot more red than blue on my indicator. Near term, you can see quite clearly when price actually found some support above it on November, we wanted to see price break, then the pullback and then the continuation. But that continuation failed to actually follow through and we saw price revert to the downside the same thing that's happening here near term resistance recently through January however the break through uh, the, the latter part of February into March has seen price now trading above the institution uh, on Friday we had a very negative candle that took us below the institution however into this 940 mark over here which is a very strong support and resistance tr uh, re resistance in the shape of the retracements on my weekly and then yesterday we saw this bullish engulfing candle Taking, a, taking pretty much all of yes, uh, uh, Friday's negative sentiment away. And this morning on the Asian session, we can see prices tentatively trying to make its way up back to the upside. I feel we do need to get above this consolidation here in order to see true momentum to the upside because we could still be capped here by these prior highs that we saw through last week at 9.50. So we would like to see price trading above 9.50 to get an indication that we should be looking top side. Quite clearly see the resistance here at 9.50. So we can see top side up towards 960, 975, and all important back up to that 1000 mark way up here. So there's a lot of scope for potential profits if and when we see price closing bullishly above that 950 mark. However, the longer we spend uh, trading sideways at 950, the more likely price is going to revert back to the downside and trade within this consolidative range. Last pair of the day is the US dollar Japanese yen. This particular pair has been growing with a lot of um, momentum since September of last year when we saw price really bottoming out and price really moving higher you can see we spent a lot of time uh, playing with the institution moving average however through November we saw a really strong move to the upside and taking my weekly FIB retracement areas the 87 was our 23.6 which was reached in the early part of the uh, latter part of December going to January we saw a nice break above that going through January nice support being found on this particular pair just the early part of January and then we saw all that buying sentiment and heading up towards that all important 38.2 however coming unstuck at 38.2 uh, clearly here at 9400 you can see price failing when it broke above to actually find support above that to kick on on each occasion the price has reverted to the downside however that this bearish engulf and candy up taking away all this negative sentiment not closing lower than the 23.6 fib retracement which indicated that price was still looking to move higher and in doing so surely moved back to reattempt the 9400 <coughs> excuse me we saw a break of that and now we're seeing the pullback and now what we want to see now is the actual support and the continuation higher the US dollar is going to now find support here at 94 and the upper side of 94 and now we should see price moving back up to the up upside we like to see price getting above this consolidative range any of you um, traders who want to trade um, with, with, with less um, risk would ideally like to see price trading above the 96.50 before we even look for, for entry levels. However, if you are more aggressive, you could look to trade into the 96.50, take a bit of profit, and then wait for the consolidation break and then trade higher. Um, it's entirely your choice. In this case over here, we want to see 96.50 being broken. Otherwise, what we can see is price consolidating and trading within a range above the 9400. The most important thing to remember is as as long as price is trading above 94 
it's still looking positive because of the fact that 94 before was a major resistance. The fact that we've actually broken this major resistance is a clear sign that US dollar still wants to find some more upside movement. And you can see that my CTC on my daily is clearly telling me we should be looking for nothing more than buying opportunities. We have got a red arrow. However, that's clearly after we saw price trading sideways for a full week and then prices reverted to the downside. So there was a bit, there's an opportunity here to actually take a bit of profit against market sentiment into 94, but you can clearly see that everybody actually sold the positions here and hence the reason why prices bounced back up to the upside now. So our daily price is going to move back up towards 96.50, a re-attempt on 96.50. We'd like to see a break of that, a nice bullish engulfing candle, and then we could look at price potentially moving all the way up to the weekly high and, and, and um, monthly highs. I've got a chart on monthly C94 here at the 100 mark, another psychological round number. So as long as this price spends above 94, the more likely price is gonna build on that and we should be heading to our next destination, which is our 50% line here at the 100% mark on our weekly and monthly time frame. So intraday, look to see if price can actually maintain um, above 94. You can see on the four hour here, clearly above the institution moving average, which is a good sign. We saw a lot of negativity and clearly a, a bounce just recently over the past couple of days. The CTC remains blue. So this near term pullback over here um, was just a profit taking. And then the hourly, you can quickly see that it's, it's actually trading against the institution near term. So we want to see price getting above that as soon as possible. Once it gets above that, then we'll be trading in a lot cleaner air. And then we could potentially be looking to trade into these highs here, I said at 90, 96.50, or you can either be very, very patient, give us back to the market, because there's a lot of consolidation here, a lot of speculative trading at the top end over here. There's a lot of work, um, and it'll just take a hell of a lot of time. Rather get, get them to do all the work for you, get a nice break above 96.50, and then we could trade higher. If we don't get above all this and we see a bearish engulfing candle, that clearly tells us that we should be looking near term back to the downside, back towards 9400, and then we, we can actually look to target that aggressively to the downside. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Please look at the news. There's a lot of news out today, especially for sterling and a bit for euro. And remember that that um, Cyprus issue is still there. They're going to have to be <coughs> working out on a deal for that. Uh, we've got the Bank of England inflation letter, which is also an important one. Uh, we have Going into this afternoon, we have the Canadian manu <coughs> manufacturing sales month and month figures, very important. And then the U.S. market um, follows suit with wholesale month and month figures and the building permits, very, very important. You want to see um, growth in, in any economy. You want to see people building or oh, building anything, houses, businesses, etc. So it's important to see how many building permits have been uh, approved and how many housing starts have actually started. They're expecting... Um, a, sl a, high, a slightly higher figure on uh, on both occasions, which is a good sentiment. So we want to see building permits being approved, a lot more of them being approved, which means that there's money out there. There's, 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 there's um, sentiment moving, flowing. And that's what we want to see. Housing starts also expect um, a higher figure than the previous figure, which is also good. So they're, they're expecting to see f more housing starts actually occurring, which is great. So we want to see all that happening. And if we do see that positive figures for the U.S. market, then we'll see uh, further movement across the U.S. dollar crosses um, to the upside for the U.S. market, uh, for the U.S. dollar in particular. So very, very important. Be aware of your fundamental news announcements and factor that into your trading. Back it up with sound money management and you're on a winner. Okay, so keep it simple. Keep it tidy. Follow the rules and you shall be successful. Okay. Anyway, have a great day and I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Until then, trade serenely.